There was so much going on in this episode. Someone's definitely prego. We see the group got together in the studio to make a classic song. And also, there's gunshots. Let's stay tuned to see what happens next. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Who tang, who tang, who tang, who tang. What's going on, y'all? Thanks for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. I'm your host, Chef Beans, coming through with the mental cuisine. You might have seen me on the Shy After Show, the Act After Show, and now I'm here to talk all things Wu Tang and American Saga. And to my left, you might have seen her on Black Lightning. You might have even seen her on Black Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I am doing two seasons. Of She's the job. doing season two. See, it's Black Lightning before and Black Lightning now. Her name is Zori. To my left, to talk about all things Wu Tang. Hey, Chef Beans, how's it going? Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's going very great. Uh, well, today we are going to talk about Wu Tang and American Saga, episode 10, Assassination Day. And it's the season finale. I you know. know what I mean? It's the season finale. Went out with a bang. I know, a, a big bang. So, today we're going to talk about people tapping into their element. There's also a lot of drama that went down this episode as far as people losing control. And at the end of this episode, we see that a lot of people are transitioning into a lot of different directions. Zuri, what did you think about this episode? Action-packed. It was right. action-packed. I feel like it wasn't predictable. I feel like the last few episodes, we've kind of been able to predict where it was going. But this took a turn. And it was fun. This was a fun episode. It def Yeah, I agree. It was a very fun episode. And I don't know, like... This episode might have been my favorite because I wasn't even checking like how much time was left. Like I, I felt like I was at a movie. No, sometimes some episodes I'm like, like, okay, how much time right. is Commercial left? Commercial number three. Let me see. Right, like what? What do they have next? But this episode, I was completely in my like the element, like the element. Engulfed. Yes, yes, that's what I was looking for, and I said element. I probably said element because that's the first topic we're gonna talk about. But before we talk about that topic in this whole after show, then news and gossip, let's say hi to our friends in the live chat. How y'all doing? Yes, they're here. Hey, King David. King David, yo, salute. We, salute to see you again, yes. bro. Yes, uh, Levi Ben, thank you for hanging out with us. See if it's in finale. No, I know I'm sad about it too. I know they did a great job on this last yes. episode. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, I was like, oh y'all, because they want you to come back for next yeah. season, which hopefully there is. One. Did you hear any word? <sighs> no, nah, I'm gonna have to text my boy Ray Kwan. Yeah, or, or, or call Riz up the chef. I'm, I'm gonna call the chef. You remember? <laughs> I'm gonna call the chef. Chef the chef. Yo, bro, yeah. uh, what's up? What's going on? So right. we gonna get into that. Let's um. Well, speaking about Ray Kwan, let's get into the first topic as far as element, mm -hmm. and we can actually start with Ray Kwan because we see that them all in the studio, and once he blessed the mic, like everyone's just excited right. about walking in their purpose. Like right. I don't know, like this scene. Might have been one of the most iconic scenes throughout the whole s season because we've only gotten a glimpse of their talent throughout the different time, whether they're rapping in the window, rapping in the park. What did you think about the scene with, I guess that was kind of a flashback from the present moment. What did you think about that scene, everybody in the studio? I think... It speaks a lot about what happens to you when your back's against the wall, like when you've fallen short of your expectations, but you right. still have this goal. Of like, so this is still the goal. I've fallen short of my expectations for myself, my family, my friends. Like, what can I do next? All you can do is c to keep going, but I feel like that pressure is removed now. All you have left is the raw passion right. and the the fun, the desire for fun. So I think like that was like a life lesson, but I also feel like that scene, they literally were having fun. And I wrote down in my notes that they had lyrics on a cereal box. Right, right. And I was like, okay, they may have done that for production, but I think it also just speaks to their rawness. Right. And how Bobby... Like, he kind of, like, obviously he lost all his music, but he was banging on, like, the electric box. Right. Forced to think out of the box. Forced to just, I might as well do what I want because doing what someone else wanted me to do didn't work. So I feel like there were just so many life lessons, like, in that studio Metaphorically. scene. Yeah. No, absolutely. I know from the documentary, they were always in competition with each other. The mics of men, I believe that's what they call on Showtime. But they spoke about how... They were the best MCs that they knew, like in the world. So when Inspector Deck went in there and smoked it, right. uh, Shotgun slash Method Man was like, oh, no, I got to rewrite because they were always with competition with each other. Okay, I'm, I want to make sure that my my bars are better than his. Like friendly right. competition, but you see they're just raw within their talent. And as far as Raekwon, I'm not sure if that was true or not, but 
I know they rolled on whatever was closest to them because that's how engulfed they were with their passion. Are they talking about anything interesting? So I have Shamik kind of spilled the beans in an interview. There will be a second season. Shamik spilled the beans. I know. It's a lot of beans and chefing going From on. From beans out to here. beans, Shamik, you spilled the beans. So, yes. so I, well, I mean, I'm excited for that. Somebody said they had me wanting to freestyle for no reason. I think that's that's what the yes, world is, yes, right? Yes, yes. So this this first season, I feel like they wanted to show you the different adversity that they had to endure growing up in mm-hmm. Staten Island, growing up as young black men in the inner city, period. Mm-hmm. That adversity, then also wanting to tap into your purpose. I feel like they did a great job at painting that picture and even a step outside of that, the different drama and calamity that goes on between different family members, right. which we're going to talk about, you know, certain family things going on. But I really enjoyed the scene. And also them tapping into their element also sparked Tommy Boy, the manager, whoever she was from Tommy Boy right. to listen and Who be like, is I didn't even get her name. Did they even give her a name. I don't remember her <laughs> name either, but I know she was a part of Tommy Boy because remember, okay. they left, he left the tape when they told him he was dropped. Mm-hmm. So she stole it, listened to it, and was like, No, this is talent. Yeah, I didn't know she was from Tommy Boy because I know the guy was from Tommy Boy. I remember the guy. Oh, you're up right. He did the bring the crates and he took it mm. home. So I don't know if she's just a friend who likes music, if she's an inspiring A and R, and she just was like taking advantage of the opportunity. She's well connected, but I believe she is a part of Tommy Boy because mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, she was at the video shoot, the music video. I don't remember her. I have no yeah. recollection of her. Yeah, no, I've I've seen her in <laughs> previous episodes in some capacity. So I like how they're element they came together like the avengers made this song and even when dennis was on a, he heard that right. beat dennis was like yeah. he, 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 he kind of act like he wasn't feeling it right. but even he started to get into his rapping bag right. like whoo <laughs> i was like stuff like that really excites me right. like i'm excited passion, passion. i'm excited to pe- see people 100 percent engulfed in their passion and the way they painted this picture even though dennis had whatever he had going on he couldn't fight passion right. banging down his door so I, all of them they all yeah, couldn't everybody. fight passion passion oh. was a ravishing dog just chasing them in the street like you i'm gonna get you right right like you you can't run from me even if you try to even if these layers and adversity goes against me i'm gonna get you regardless yeah you know what i mean so i really enjoyed how element <laughs> even how could we odb even odb right. was like yo like this my, my voice is an instrument right. like that was it's a like, bar okay. i'm like it was because even you had to think back to like what are the gifts that you have that you know sometimes people may not like discredit them but you mm-hmm. sticking true to who you are and that's who made him who he is right right, right. he has a very unique sound approach in no matter what you can always tell when odb is on the track like this is something <laughs> like how he just carries his voice even said what he said like i'm i'm james brown i'm the original james right. brown from the documentary it talked about like that was the type of music he was into like mm-hmm. his mother that's the music his mother played at the house mm-hmm. like that old school type music so he kind of carried that same element into his own personal element mm-hmm. uh, so but speaking about elements can you tell the viewers yeah. how we have this after buzz element right. going on hey guys I just want to say thank you for making us the ESPN of TV talk. I love being here on After Buzz, manning the chat, um, looking in the comments. Give us five stars on iTunes if you're listening, because obviously you've made it to episode 10, which means you love us. Right. Um, Chef Beans is doing great things outside of After Buzz as well as in After Buzz. So am I. So I can't say thank you enough to obviously the platform. And thank you guys for always supporting. Thank you so much. What are they, what are they talking about in... Um Yes, okay. Because so. this episode 10, I want to make sure everyone gets their comments off and just yeah. ask questions because we're here for y'all. You feel me? Right. I wish they showed Dennis coming to the studio to lay his verse and squash things with Shaw. There's just so many missing things. Right. And I don't know if they were like, oh, shoot, we're only at season 10. And then if they just got renewed a few days ago and they wanted to get the story out. Like, I wish I had a backstory because there's so many holes and I still want ODB story. Right. I feel like he's going to come up more more in season two if there is allegedly going to be a season two. Even though in season one, he, I mean, I guess they had to do what they had to do. We got, we even <laughs> got a glimpse of Jizza, and I know Jizza, ODB, and Rizza, like they were a thing because they're related at first. Mm-hmm. Like they were very, they were always with each other. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but <laughs> yes, I agree. 
But now let's transition into losing control because a lot of people were losing control Mm -hmm. in this episode. And let's start with Bobby D. We didn't really get into Bobby D like that yet. We saw him losing control on that electric box, whatever he was doing. But he was also losing control because I'm a a Dilla, a Dilla. That's his name. Attila. 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 Because Attila took all his music, all his equipment, and he's trying to figure out how to get it back. Just to say, hey, I've been holding this 5K for you. Use your mind, brother. Use your mind. Asiatic black man, all of that. He tries to set it up. Attila isn't with it. What did you think about, like, that whole scene? Uh, I took note, like, Bobby D, really? Like, this guy is a cold killer. Like, try it again at, like, a prison reform. Right. But as far as calling him in and you owe him 50000 and you try to give him five, sixty thousand, sixty thousand. 60000 Why? None of it made sense. And I know, like, he's been getting so much pressure from the five percenters. He's wanting to own his own, like, space and be the leader that he is for Wu-Tang. And Bobby saves the day, but just not for the cold killer. In that situation, I I got what they were trying to communicate. Like, you know what? Like, you just tell him, use your mind. I don't want you to kind of go that route. And after he tried with the 5K, set up the... I like that. Like, you set up the you dinner. Liked it. I I I appreciate Chef, would it. would you, a man that you owed 60K, would you bring him into a restaurant, your mom's ex-job, where you just got a free meal? So, obviously, this is a space that you are comfortable in and a place that welcomes you. You would bring a cold killer and offer him $5,000 when you owe him 60 I don't owe him anything. Let's, okay. let's start there. I don't okay. owe him anything. But, personally, I would have tried the... Actually, I don't know what I would have did if I was in that moment. But I understand the rational aspect of like trying to use my mind to not create this situation. But as we can see, it didn't work out in Bobby's favor in that at that time period. But what did he do? Hit up his boy Dennis because you know Dennis is always with the with the with (laughs) Dennis is with the chit chat. (laughs) Yeah, no, Dennis is with that like that action. So he told Dennis, "Look, and I, I thought it was funny how they had all this prophetic, you know, like." Words from the five percent of a black man, blah, blah, blah. but we gotta kill him. <laughs> kind of I, I was shocked that that was Bobby's resolution, and I feel like in my notes I wrote, I was like, "Is this kind of like where he is fed up with everyone after getting dropped from the record label, losing his tapes? Like, is has he not gone off the deep end? But is he this desperate? Because we haven't heard him be the one person to suggest violence, let alone kill someone yet." So I'm like, what's happening with Bobby psychologically? I'm a little worried. Well, when it comes to the the psychological aspect, like I said, Bobby was losing control because of that situation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like his back was against the wall at that point because music is what made him feel complete. And that was taken away from him. So regardless to whatever he tried to do, he still had that gap in his mind. So after he did calculations, he was like, I have to remove this person from my life because even if we steal it we're always going to be running and i don't want to run from this situation he even told his older brother like you've been holding down the family for all these years let me take care of this i like i don't i don't need any words from you right Right. now let me take care of this because he wanted to be the problem solver what are they talking about um um not too much going on here they're just chatting among themselves but i can't say that i i still just seem so far out of bobby's character like he just seems so like of a higher thought like frequency and all you think of is to kill him like i think bobby would have maybe set him up for somebody else to kill him like hey bro he just touched your girl some something like you know pin him up for a robbery like make it look like he robbed something i just feel like bobby just thinks so far ahead and for him to stoop down to a dennis right or a divine like it was it was I'm, a little low for me i'm not surprised he was at his <laughs> boiling point right he was at his boiling point in if it's one thing that I know about passion slash losing your marbles in a situation like that, he got dropped. Every, everything was kind of crashing at the mm-hmm. moment to where he was forced to be the man of the house that he's in by himself. Right. He tried to go the good guy route all this time, but it's like, yo, I have to take matters into my own hands to get what I want. And that's why he hit up his boy, Dennis. And we see that even Cherie, there was a lot of unbalance in her losing control of her life to where she took a one-way bus to New York <laughs> because she was prego. I'll tell you who I really enjoyed losing control this episode, Mom. Right. Her face when he says she's not here. 
I, I was like, finally. I didn't. It didn't even make me think that Cherie went to go see Dennis. I thought she might have gone to a play, gone to a friend's house to just talk it out. Well, she was at the abortion clinic. Right, but the next scene was when we oh, see true. her on the bus. True. And I didn't think that she was going to go see Dennis, especially after the last conversation when Dennis is like, girl, like we are nothing. This is We can't take this anywhere. So I was wondering... I wonder which, what's the conversation going to be like, but it looks like he took it well. Well, yeah, she probably felt like her back was against the wall because at the abortion clinic, they had the people outside with the signs, mm -hmm. protesters, no, you know, this is wrong. So that she probably felt that pressure and she didn't want to take care of it by herself, like mm -hmm. take care of the situation. So that's why she decided to transition in her moment of losing control. You right. know what I mean? So, I mean... Speaking about transition, let's talk about how a lot of people transition due to everything that kind of crashed in this, not just episode, this season. So I want to start with the situation because this episode is called An Assassination Day. Let's talk about the assassination. So once they decided that Attila needed to be gone, they went to Brooklyn, got, got the peace, and now it's time to make everything happen. So here we are, right? Stay Staten Island, boom, bow. You hide behind that van. I hide behind here. We're going to wait until it comes out at 10 o'clock. Make it happen. And right before they're both about to take care of the situation, here comes Shuri. What did you think about that whole I'm scene? I'm like, girl, this is the worst possible time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't expecting him to get shot. I was expecting there to be like a rumble and Shuri to like, be like, you know, like, oh, hey, girl, come on, let's, let's just go. And him, like, snatch Sheree up and it just be, like, a heist. Like, right. I was expecting that. I really wasn't expecting them to, like, stay behind the trash can and him just get shot. I was, I didn't think Bobby was going, like, <laughs> I, I just didn't think. I, I, I thought this was going to be, like, a situation where he shot him, then he flashed back and still had the gun and just, like, walked away. Like, like a dream, like, like a bad dream. Right, like a dream. <laughs> like, oh, shoot. Like, no, I can't. But he yeah. really, really shot, really shot him. Like, he really shot him. And I know... Dennis probably felt some type of way because it seems like Dennis was supposed to come from behind and they kind of catch him on both angles. But Dennis like, was bro, you left me hanging. Dennis was spun in a very vulnerable place. He's a dad, right? Right. So he's like, <laughs> it's like he tried to really push it right. No, I'm, I'm prego. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, like it, it was just like bad timing for that situation. The worst possible time. I'm trying to kill someone. Right. She, Cherie is the only person that ever that I've seen ever made Dennis vulnerable. Right. So what are the chances in this very hard situation, this very hard scene, mm -hmm. the one kryptonite that lower right. my shield comes to say, oh, by the way, I know you love me and I'm also Prego. There's a junior on the way. Right. Yeah, that, that was a, a crazy scene. But as we can see. It was time for them to make a move out there because Attila, he could have killed Attila, but right. I think that's where his... So do you think, wait, now that I'm having a flashback, do you think that that was self-defense? Because Bobby pulled his gun out, Attila pulled his out, and then Bobby shot him. So now I'm thinking back, did Bobby ever have the intention on shooting him? Or was it just kind of like a scare or I mean business stop punking me or do you think he actually went in with the mindset of, I'm actually going to shoot this guy I think he just had to kind of grab his cojones in that moment back to what was it episode 2 when Ray was like grab your balls Bobby like right. I think it was, in that situation it's kind of like man to man we both got our heat I'm, I'm going to do something. Like, you're not just going to punk me. And I want my music. <laughs> like, I, I want my stuff. Like, yeah. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into that. Yeah. I think that was the biggest energy behind everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like, to me, I don't think that Bobby actually expected to shoot him. Because especially there are times when someone says, like, you know what? Actually, you are a man. And I choose to respect you now that you were actually, you had the nerve to come up to me and shoot me. Like, I feel like I now respect you. You're no longer right. punk in my eyes. So it could have gone that route. Obviously, that was too easy. But yeah, now I just had like the replay in my mind of the actual scene. I'm like, Bobby waited to shoot him until he was about to get shot. I feel like if he was going to shoot him and it just would have been like in that moment. Right. Kind and of. even they, he, Bobby pulled out some 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 big yeah, like I was, a, I, was, I, was, I was looking in the barrel of that gun like, "Whoa, Bobby." I thought I thought he was going to pull out something <laughs> like he was yeah. like, "No, nah, like I'm I'm trying to end this dude." Yeah. Was, Do you know how to work that? No, nah, yo, that was funny. <laughs> so, I mean, so I I want to get back into that, but let's also talk about everyone else's 
transition and get to get back to the title of this episode, Assassination Day. I think a lot of people, the assassination of who they were this season is kind of gone. Mm -hmm. We can get into Shotgun, how we saw him in this element in the mm -hmm. studio. And then once he found out he didn't have his job anymore, but bills needed to be paid because clearly he was staying with Inspector Deck. He said, you can't be eating my food anymore. You got to figure something out. Right. <laughs> and he transitions back. To the street, well, I mean, into the streets, like right, yo. Because he wasn't in the streets before, right? He right. was just working. He was just working. Being honest, we like, I need money to make, and we see like his at home family situation isn't the best. Mm -hmm. So he's just kind of like, yeah, we don't get a backstory of that. We got, yeah, we got a, a, a minor one when he was playing lacrosse, and we saw him jumping oh, from yeah, house yes, to house. So that that was the most that we got from Shotgun. He tried to go back to his job, but they said. No. Nah. You got injured on the job and you still got fired. Right. You got fired on your day off. You got off. fired on your day <laughs> off. <laughs> How you get fired on your day off? Man. Shotgun got fired on his day off. And we also see, which actually made my heart smile, mm -hmm. Ray tapped back in with his parents, Ray Kwan. I thought he was going to rob the church. What? Now, hear me out. Hear me out. We don't know. We lo didn't, siento, lo siento. We didn't know Ray's parents. We, well... We the only thing we knew is that they were they always went to that church. Yes. From from early on in the season, we, right. we knew that because that's when Dennis was trying to rob him. He's like, this is where his parents be at. No, that's Power's parents. No, no. Power's parents are from the clothing store. Right. I'm talking about early on before Ja passed away when Dennis and Ja was in the car and they were kind of plotting on Ray and they saw that. Ray's parent like this he, he usually goes to church with his parents so mm -hmm. that's that's why I connected to me in that moment I'm like okay maybe he's gonna see his parents right I think Ja was like episode three that was like episode two three when they were like so, plotting yeah, on you yeah I totally wasn't thinking that I'm thinking okay this guy he this is when is he now? gonna rob the church with bibles no you need the money church got money have you seen the pastor's cars I did but I'm just saying, I, I, I don't know. Well, I, I just feel like he's obviously the drugs aren't working anymore. So I thought I was like, you know what? I need money. The bills are due. I'm going to rob the church. Like, that, that's what I was thinking. That was overt that the drug, this drug life wasn't working for him anymore. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that he was vigilant and he saw like the people on the, on the porch. He saw the guy in the car. Like they were really setting him up from all corners. So right. we were about to see the end of Raekwon. Right. And he used his spidey senses to be like, <laughs> you know what? Actually... Actually, I'm, 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 all right, I'm going to head out. Like the yeah. SpongeBob. All right, I'm going <laughs> to head, gonna head out. out. So do you think this is the end of him in power? Because power goes and recruits shotgun, but we don't ever see a final conversation. Nah, this isn't the end between them and power because I'm going to wait till we get to like predictions and things like that. But power, I believe, has a paramount position with Wu-Tang and marketing. Yeah, and he does. So it's not the end of that. I just think power finds a different way to use his wit. To make things happen. Instead mm -hmm. of selling a bunch of drugs, let me sell a bunch of albums. Right. And let me be part, I guess, the marketing and branding. So we see Ray lose control slash transition into mending the relationship with his parents. Mm -hmm. We see Shotgun transition into the streets. And I can even see the transition aspect in Jizz's eyes because he's looking at his album, hearing the kids talking about different things like that. But I don't necessarily know if he... Feels like in control of that situation. I think he's kind of like, at a, like at a, he's at an intersection. Did you mm -hmm. peep that? Yeah, like when he gave the guy his album, he looked really disgusted with it. Yeah, I think because if he is the genius, which clearly he is, in that moment, I think he felt like he had strings on his, his body. Like, yes, this this felt good. What I was doing over here with my boys. Even though I got this record label, I don't know if I'm necessarily feeling this record label. Yeah. And based off your facial expression, I feel like no, you just No, I just laughed. She said, someone said, Attila's the hood Hulk. He got shot and didn't and wouldn't die. And I was like, that's true. <laughs> that was one shot in the right. shoulder. Like, I knew that wasn't going to do anything. Right. Like, I, I just, Attila's like what? Everyone knows, right? The shoulder, the knee, or like the, you know, there's just certain places that you we know people typically make it out of. Right. But if Bobby had that extra itch in him, Maybe he would have moved two centimeters over. Right. Yeah. Attila, <laughs> Attila would have been um, assassinated. Like, right. seriously. So, I mean, we spoke about all of their transitions, though. Mm -hmm. Let's speak about the last scene. Like, that transition. Mm -hmm. Bobby, Dennis, and Cherie are on the bus to Ohio. What did you feel about? Like, how did you feel about that scene? I was shocked. I... I haven't seen the documentary. So... Right. But I do know that Bobby left town for some time. Yeah. Um, I was shocked that Dennis is 
there being happy. Like I was totally expecting Dennis to go back into Dennis mode. Right. Just like Cherie, like, yo, I got an extra five hundred. Let's end this. Like, right, right, right. Go back and go study for your test. Go be a dancer. Um, Bobby took it well, obviously. Like and I don't know if this is Bobby at this point is just so exhausted, right? We know in life can just be like you know, life is just trying and trying. Like, okay, guys, you're just you're having a baby. Like, right. I, we didn't even really see that conversation. I would have liked to see the news being broke to Bobby, um, but I'll just add that to my list of things. That list I list that of holes. <laughs> list of holes. Yeah, list of holes. But yeah, I'm glad that they took it well and that there's a kumbaya moment because right. I don't know how that would have gone. Right. All of this <laughs> is happening while their music is being passed around like people are like yo who are these guys who are these guys the yes. phone his phone is going off at the crib nobody's there right. ray is trying to figure out where he's at it's it's just a lot going on but mm -hmm. they did i feel like I, I feel like they did that intentionally so we can be like we don't know what direction to go like oh my god shotgun is in the streets oh ray ray turned over a new leaf mm -hmm. oh divine is reading books and he's back with his girl i have another moment what what's your moment so one of my favorite things to see on instagram is like don't stress your name is in rooms that you've never even stepped into i do like that one wow and i feel like when this woman was passing around their album i didn't care for that she was taking credit i hope that she didn't get one paycheck off being there oh, Fake man, yeah. yeah i hope not but I feel like, you know, when we're stressing about life and things aren't going our way, it is true. Like somebody is looking for you. I somebody Ooh, is it speaking it is about you, whether it's an Instagram post, a Facebook post, a girl that walks past the store every day at 3 p.m. Like your name is in rooms that you have never even been in. And the Wu Tang is like, I always used to see that. And I was just like. Mm, this is cute. This is the Wu Tang story. This right. woman, they're on the radio and they don't even know it. Right, right, right. Like how the this guy from a was a Def Jam, uh, uh, a big record later called her twenty seven times about them. Like the other guy is blowing Bobby up when Bobby couldn't even get them to not make him wear a top hat. Like that's how much say he had, and now right. like he's being sought after. So I received that. Keep that grind. Keep grinding. Nah, that was affirmations by Zori. Yeah, <laughs> your name is in rooms that you haven't even stepped into yet. Wow, yeah, can we can we get some yes. claps on the chair? Like, oh my gosh, that that just warmed up my heart. <laughs> wow, yeah. So there was a lot going on this oh. episode. Oh, you heard the claps? <laughs> yes, yes. I re I re I received that. So, yeah. will there be a season two? Apparently, there is. I mean, I haven't read anything about it, but my heart is very full. Speaking about full, speaking about. News. I think you have some news and gossip for us, right? I do. So today for my news and gossip segment, I know that we heard protect your neck a few times. So I was like, let me deep dive into what exactly is going on here. So apparently a protect your neck was recorded in a Brooklyn studio called Firestone by a guy named Ro Yo Ran. So okay. he owned it and MC Light actually shot, I mean, actually recorded some of her first music there. So it was a pretty well-known spot. It was actually a loft, and the booth was in the walk-in closet. Oh, wow. In the living room, they had the drum set, and okay. then they turned eventually turned the rooms into offices. Right. So what makes the story so interesting is that by the time Wu-Tang... So at this point, they had all had been dropped from their labels, and um, RZA called him up and said, Hey, you know, I'm bringing seven guys in. We all just got dropped from our labels, and basically, we have something to show the world. And the guy's like, okay, cool. So they all came in, did their stuff. By the time they were done, their studio session cost $300. Wow. Right. Imagine what today's artist would have done with a $300 studio set. Right. But they, um, Yoran, it was an interview. Um, he talks about they were all still working full-time jobs. Right. And he was working at Con Ed, which I think is another gym because, you know, we feel like we have to, sometimes you have to quit your job and you have to just fully dive in. But also, Wu-Tang. You're preaching today, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Wu-Tang was doing this Protecting Neck was just like one of the biggest songs that they ever dropped they were still working jobs and they did this after work and um, by the time they were done it was $300 they didn't have the $300 and I was thinking like wow seven guys didn't come up with $300 and they were forward with it right it wasn't even like a sketchy sneaky thing like hey bro we don't have it but I promise we're gonna get it like in the interview he kept talking about how Wu-Tang said we're gonna get you this money and he was like don't even worry about it. At this time, the studio is popping. You know, right. so he's like not even thinking about it. Wu Tang eventually paid Yo Ran in quarters. 
<laughs> That's and, funny. Yep, and they continue to um Film, I mean, film. They continue to record their music there and they built a really good relationship. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, that's, that's, that's very dope. And mm-hmm. I, I, I received that because this speaks more to passion. I think they did a great yeah. job at showing how passionate these guys were about taking steps towards bringing their talents to life. Like, I'm going to pay you in quarters because I believe in myself that much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm attached integrity to it. We don't have it right now, but we're 100% going to give it to you. So thanks for that news yeah. and gossip. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't believe like three hundred dollars, and then you couldn't. Oh, it's fine that they didn't have it, but right. even to know like something, this huge song was created in the studio time cost three hundred dollars. Hey, in a room, a two bedroom. Yo, it, 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 it's like that sometimes. <laughs> Do you have any predictions for the next season? This potential oh, next season. Man, I think Attila's gonna roll up on Divine. Okay. Because I think he's his only tie left to the family. Right. I was also really worried about Dennis's family because mom is all obviously a little off. Right. And I'm like, Dennis, you're leaving your brothers. You're all that they have. I forgot about that. Yeah. So like when I saw Dennis on, I wish I would have said that. Yeah. When I saw Dennis on the bus, my first thought was your brothers. Right, what are you right. going to do? So yeah, Attila's going to roll up on Divine. And yeah, that's my biggest prediction. I think my biggest prediction, we're going to get more into the music and the ups and downs that comes with the music industry. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how they're going to end the season because there was a time where Wu-Tang kind of started bumping heads with each other. But we're definitely going to dive more into music. (sighs) My heart is sad (laughs) because it was season finale but we yes. just want to say thank yeah, you yeah I want to shout you, out some thank people you. Yeah, shout out some people Cartes Parker Levi Ben Yuda you have been with us since day one right day uno yes um, Homer Wright you are definitely going up in the chat Born Allah hey uh, King David you know this is our last go around with you and I just want to say thank you for showing up each and every Wednesday with your wisdom and insight it definitely goes appreciated Yes, but this doesn't have to be all. It doesn't have to be. Zuri, where can they find you being that this is the season yes. finale? Yes, you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Zuri Shalice, Z-U-R-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-C-E. Oh my gosh, and you can find me on all social media platforms at Chef, C-H-E-F underscore Beans, B-E-A-N-Z. Promise you won't be disappointed, literally. But thanks for coming out. My heart yes. is sad, but... Stay, stay tuned, stay yes. locked in. After Buzz TV has a lot, a lot in store. So being that this after show is over, you can still watch other after shows for your favorite show, ESPN of TV Talk. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Farewell. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of After Buzz TV or its owners or principals.